Good afternoon. I have a challenge. <laughs> I have been asked to create a birdhouse and I think it was because of the angry birds and how cute they were and in the owl birdhouse that sold almost within minutes of me posting a picture of it and the person who bought the owl birdhouse wants a shark birdhouse. Okay and I don't even know where to begin. So I pulled out some gourds. I've got a potato gourd. I like using potato gourds to make gourd houses, gourd bird houses, because they're nice and thick and I think they'll last a long time. And I always remember to drill a few holes. And when I make a bird house, I always leave the insides in so that the birds can do what they want with it, like build a nest. And I also have a chart that I consult and I ask the person, is this really for real birds and what kind of birds? And if it is for real birds, then I make sure the hole is the correct size. And I've read that you shouldn't put a little perch because it gives snakes something to get up into the bird nest with, I suppose. I don't know. I only put um, a little perch on it if it's one that goes on a Christmas tree or something like that. So potato gourd, I'm not so sure. This, I don't even know what, if this is a, this is a mixture of a gourd, mixture of a gourd. I don't know if I, how big, how big should a shark be? I mean, this looks sort of like a whale. How do I make it look like a shark? Do I have a short fat shark? Should it be like a shark mouth? Should it be a long swimming shark? I've kind of been going through all my gourds, looking at them, kind of going, hey, anybody in here who wants to be a shark, right? This is how we do it, right? Because a lot of times when you look, this one just looks like an enormous corn dog. A lot of times when you look at the gourds, people will say, oh, they speak to me and they tell me what they want to be. I want to be horses running on a prairie or I want to be a shark birdhouse. <laughs> so this is the studio where I've been working and this is where all the gourds are that none of them seem to say shark birdhouse to me. So I'm going to head out to the chicken coop and look for a gourd. From the studio, I'm going to head out toward the river and there is Kiki. Hello Kiki. What you doing? Kiki. Past the remnants of the garden. Here's another project that's waiting for me. I have some broken pots and I'm going to be working on kind of like stapling them together with copper, but I will show you that in another project. And out here to the chicken coop. And the top of the chicken coop has got some storage. And in the storage, there are a lot of spiders and roaches and a truck's worth of gourds stored in here. And they are dirty, dirty, dirty. They're all in these um, little mesh bags. So I'm going to be looking through here to see if I can find a gourd that says to me I would make a really good shark birdhouse. Let's see what we find. Okay, I'm on the other side of the chicken coop and I started I started pulling out gourds and a mouse came out. <laughs> So I think what's happened here is I bought some gourds at a show and then I bought some more gourds at another show and I stuck them in here and then I bought some more gourds at another show. And the other thing that's been happening is I've been using up all my very little gourds and I have some really big gourds and I'm going to have to come up with some projects for big gourds, but I have to brave the area. And I found out I've got some, oh my gosh, I'm so thrilled. I've got some of those, um, what do you call them? The flat, the, the flat gourds. Got some of those. I've got some really big ones. Canteen. I've got some canteen gourds. Got, um, kind of running low on bottle gourds, but I've got everything else. So I need to start designing some projects around the gourds that I do have. So I think there are going to be some large scale projects coming up because I need to use a lot of these really large gourds because this is, oh, it's about how many feet across is where we store the mower. Um, well, if that's a sheet of plywood, it's six or eight feet across by six or eight feet. So six by six by six is, I don't know, how many square feet of gourds? Oh dear. Okay, I'm supposed to be making dinner, but I found about one, two, three, four, five, about eight gourds in the chicken coop after I saw the mouse. 
about eight quarts in the chicken coop that are contenders for the shark birdhouse. And of course, I saw some other little really cute gourds. And oh, that one makes such a cute little whatever it was. And this will make such a cute little whatever it is. I don't know about you, but sometimes I pull gourds out, I get them all washed up. And uh, then I put them in the lineup, and then I can't remember what it was I was going to make out of them. But I, what I'm kind of hoping, it's going to be noisy. What I'm kind of hoping is this is really big, but maybe this could be the shark gourd. And the other thing is, the reason I don't do sharks or manatees is because you end up doing them mostly gray, and I just don't want to do a gray gourd, which is why when I did the octopus, I did all pearly colors and blues and things like that, and turquoises and teals and all the, you know, the colors they get when they're angry. So um, this might be my shark birdhouse, but I'm, I'm gonna have to look up some examples, okay? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just over here cleaning with a copper scrubby, if you wanna know what I'm doing. These copper scrubbies are really special because they don't rust. It's really hard to find some that are 100% copper and not other parts, cheap filler metals that rust and these don't rust, so I love them. Be something like that, really scary looking or something more like cute like that, or I'm kind of leaning toward maybe something like this, like a Sharkominia. And interestingly enough, the gourd that I have chosen to use might just lend itself to something like that. I'd have to do, I'd have to build on it. And I kind of like using a regular gourd. I kind of don't want to build stuff, but I might just have to do a little bit of building on this one. And uh, slide a little bit into the area of whimsy. All right, total change of plans for the shark birdhouse. It's going to have to be this one because I think I'm going to run into a shipping problem with that other one. That other cord was absolutely huge. So, and I also have a design that I like. I think it's a t shirt design, so I don't feel really bad about ripping it off or anything. I think it's a it's like a tie-dye, maybe a shibori. I don't know. It just looks kind of tie-dye and really nifty. And I didn't want to do a gray shark. So this is kind of fat for a shark, but I think we can make do. I just have to figure out, does the birdhouse open and go like on the side or, you know, where does, where does it go? Oh gosh. And I could see from wearing a mask, I've got my face is all irritated. So just don't look at that. <laughs> just look at the box. What you doing? What you doing? That box is for the shark. Did you sign it? Yeah. All right, so I've made some preliminary marks of where I want the fins that are going to be on the side. I want them there and there. So the shark body is going to sit about like this. And then the dorsal fin. Dorsal? Dorsal. Which one's the dorsal? This is going to come up like that. So it'll kind of disappear coming towards you. And I don't really know where the birdhouse opening is going to be. The mouth? I'm going to get the whole thing done and then figure out where the, where the birdhouse is going to be. What you doing, Spoon? Good kitty. Is your tongue sticking out? Oh, your tongue is sticking out. You're so cute. You're so cute. Okay, you guys are cute too, but his tongue is sticking out, which is really cute. For me, the next spot, for me, the next trick for making the spot where I'm going to put the items in is I just need to make a little incision there. Let's see if I can put this down so you can see. I'm just going to make a little incision there, just a smallish one. Thin enough that I can slip a blade into. I'm just going to pull it out. So I've just got a little incision, and I can use that with a saw and cut my fins 
and then use the saw to cut out the right shape there. And the shape might be more curved. We'll just have to see. So I'm just am doing a start. This part of the gourd is a whole lot thicker. So I might have to come back and do a second, like a second little, there, I'll just go ahead and do it. So I did two incisions so that I have a little bit thicker opening there. This is the part that's hard to saw into because it is so thick. So see, I'm just, I'm getting a little bit wider, a little bit wider notch there, just to make sure that my saw blade can get in there and make the shape I want. Then once I have whatever it is that's going to be the fin, like if it's this and it's curved, I'll take the pencil and draw a line along the curve and figure out how to set it in. Like, that would be a manatee tail. But I'm not doing a manatee. I'm doing a shark. So we'll the tail's got to be like this. <laughs> hey, this might make a good tail. No, their tails are real pointy. Yeah, their tails have got a, a top point and a bottom point. So we'll see what's going to work for that. Well, that's the box that's supposed to fit a shark, but I guess it fits a cat pretty well as well. So here's how far I've gotten. I cut the two, oops. I cut the two pieces and I cut a slot that was kind of oval and I can really wedge, wedge the fins in there. And then I might put a little bit of quick wood or something to keep them there. Well, let's see. And he's starting to look a little bit like a shark. And now I need to do the tail. This is my idea of the tail. And I have taken and cut all the way through. And first I just used a knife to kind of do the slits. And then I've got a little lithium. This is a little Ryobi. Um, it's kind of nice because it has a light on the front. And so you can see where you are. So you can see where you're cutting. And so I cut the slit to put the tail in. I'm going to put the tail in and see if it looks scary yet. I'm kind of worried that this is going to be not a scary shark, but that's okay. It's going to be more like a tie dye shark. All right, this is just a tiny bit too tight to fit the tail in. So I've got some sandpaper in there and I'm just running it back and forth to try and open up this opening a little bit just enough for this tail to fit in there and it's a little bit curved and I don't want to break it so uh, getting closer and tomorrow I could spend the day uh, decorating it that'd be fun I have finished up the tail and I've got it all sanded so that it fits in there perfectly just goes right in hard to do this with one hand but basically like that and so there is the general feel of the shark oh it doesn't look good it looks like a very guppy shark but the tail is so delicate that i'm probably going to put quick wood or something on the back side of it just to thicken it up a little bit uh worst case i could always put <laughs> gel nails <laughs> i know how to do that <laughs> So this is how he's looking right now. I can't wait to decorate it tomorrow and decide where does the bird hole opening go. I think it might have to go here. Oh, we're videoing. <laughs> okay, you're part of the work crew. All right, I have mentioned Quickwood before, but I haven't really showed you working with it. And so I want to slow down a little bit and show you what it's really like to work with. And I think he's going to have to go find the shark's box. So, I've got the shark. I think I accidentally said whale last night. I was tired. Got the shark. And he looks best from this angle, I believe. And the tail is a little bit flimsy because it's just a single, you know, single layer of gourd. And I could try and cut some more gourd pieces. But I think I want, I want to build it up a little bit here and here and just make a more natural, uh, I don't know how you explain it, a more natural transition between what is his tail and what is his tail. So I'm gonna set that right here. 
pardon the hair, we have a hurricane coming through, so I have um, humidity hair, barometer hair. All right, I've got my quick wood. And I had already taken the label off, but it looks, looks like this. It's a two-part epoxy that just has to be mixed. So I'm going to take a razor blade, just like that. Glad to know where all those needles went. They're all stored in here. And I'm going to cut off as, as much as I think I can use, but as much as I think I can work within the time period before it hardens. And I've got about 10 to 15 minutes before it hardens. I always end up needing more than I think, but it's okay to go in small bits and keep adding. So I'm going to go with maybe about an inch. So I'm just cutting it through like that. And there is plastic on the outside of this. And there's a little dot on the end and there's probably some kind of hardened epoxy there. I'll just take the dot and put it back there to help keep that from drying out. And now I'm almost to the point where I need to go ahead and put something on my hands so that this doesn't stick so badly. All right, so I'm just peeling that off. So this is what I've got. So now I need to put something on my hands. I think the reason I like this one was because it's a flip lid but this is the better, better choice. Just gonna put a little bit in my hands and work it around so that the quick wood doesn't stick to my hands so badly. Plus with all this work, you are probably drying your hands out a little bit. Spook is settled on a spot on the floor. All right, so I've got that. So what I've gotta do is roll it a lot until it's completely mixed. And so, see how right now it still has some different colors? So I've gotta keep going. It's really interesting that most two-part epoxies, you have to keep the two parts separate. And with this, the two parts are stored together. You just have to activate them. See, I've still got marbling, so I gotta keep going. And it feels like it's getting a little bit warm in my hands, which means it's getting active. And I'm looking around for my extender. I've got some oil that you use as an extender that you can kind of smooth places with it and make it not kick quite so fast. So I'm just rolling it into a long thing like this. And then with my hands, I'm basically folding it over like that. And again, just as many times as I can to make sure it's thoroughly, thoroughly mixed. Now, depending on the humidity in your house, it may kick faster or slower. It's a little bit humid here, so it'll be a little bit slower. So this is what I've got, and I've got to figure out just how much I want to put where here and how I want to kind of fade it in. I could probably use this whole thing, but I want to kind of work on this. And where is my extender? Oh, it's a little bitty bottle. Okay, so I'm just going to put it there, and then I'm going to kind of work it, and here's the thing. You end up with your fingerprints in it, so if you ever need to figure out if I'm me, just grab one of my gourds, you'll have my fingerprints right away. But I just kind of want to solve this space here and make it look a little bit more natural that it flows from one part to the other. Now you can see definitely why I'm going to prime the whole thing. Yeah, I'm not really happy with this so far. This is just looking kind of feeling like it yet. Some people lick their finger and then you really shouldn't do that. It's probably got some chemicals in it that aren't too good for you. But the extender is like an oil that is basically allows you to smooth it out a little bit more. I don't have to worry about my finger marks in here because it's supposed to be a shark skin which would have some that's gonna be so obvious I mean and once that's on there I can grind it if I need if I feel like I need to smooth down this little edge or something I can grind it with a Dremel tool or a drill master or even sandpaper. 
but I'm just kind of trying to work on spreading it out. It doesn't feel as warm as it did earlier, but it will start to harden up. When I did the bird houses, I ended up taking their little claws and I perched their little claws over something like this because if it's thin enough, the stuff will just um, fall and sink and go wherever gravity takes it. All right, so that's a bit of a build up there. And now I'm gonna do a bit of a build up on this side to make it look more natural. And I've got the other part. A little bit more silicone glove just so it doesn't stick to me and as long as I've got it on my hand I might kind of use this like extender I'm just using a little bit of the hand cream to allow me to really smooth there smooth it out so it fares in Hey, I might have just found the next best thing next to extender, right? A lot less expensive. I can sand it. Okay, other side. So my idea is I want it to look like the fin is actually attached to, to the body. <laughs> So we know a shark's fin gets pretty skinny, but it doesn't, there's a lot of muscle, so it doesn't start out skinny. So I'm just pressing, kind of working it out. Like I said, I've got 10 to 15 minutes to really work with it. It's a good thing you can sand this stuff. Mm, okay, it's not as bad as it was. Okay, packing extender, I'm taking a tiny bit of hand cream and just using it so I can smooth. I want the transition right here to be pretty smooth because it, it would be. I mean, sharks don't have a tail that's glued on, except this one. He's gonna be a very pretty shark. Or she, maybe it's a she. All right, I'm gonna let that sit for a bit and just kind of ponder it and think about it. It's. It's better, <laughs> it's better, but I think it still needs, still needs some more building up. I grabbed a little bit more of that. What is this silicone glove? I'm just using that so that I could smooth this without making fingerprints in it. Sometimes you're not actually trying to completely recreate the animal that you're creating. You're giving it a suggestion of something that lets your mind believe it's what you say it is. And sometimes you have to exaggerate some parts of animals just to make them look a little bit realistic. So it's okay. I mean, the paint job on this is just going to be wild. So it's okay if it doesn't look exactly like a shark. Once we put all the features in, you'll just have the idea that it's a shark. Really, really smooth there. All right, I've messed with that enough. I have to decide if I need a little bead of it here and here. I think not. I think I can start painting at this end and by the time I get to that end, that will be a little bit more filled in. And once I get it all one color, then this isn't going to distract me as much and I'll be able to make a decision on if this is really looking okay or if it just looks a little bit too, like does it taper off too fast? All right, I didn't want to bore you with every single step, but I put more quick wood on the tail and now it looks like a lobster claw. <laughs> I think I might have to sand it a little bit just to make it really, really pointy. Kind of looks like a shark from this angle. Still looks a little bit like the transition's too skinny right there, so I need, think I need to work on that. I think these look okay, actually, from this angle. It's just the 
tail doesn't look it used to be a big powerful tail and then narrow down logically not like it's stuck on <laughs> so i'm gonna have to build this up even more oh boy but it's getting there i'll just put a whole lot here and a whole lot here and try and build it up another layer all right so i had an initial layer a second layer and i put a third layer and i can see now i still need to fare this out it looks like a strange appendage so i need to come here and probably here and do a bunch more with quick wood there and <laughs> nope don't show that <laughs> i need to do a bunch more with quick wood and make it connect here so it looks like a strong muscle but i think i I think I kind of did like a shark tooth shape and I think it kind of makes it look a little bit more muscly so I can fill in right there. All right, one more go around and I might have this. Oh. Such a good helper, such a good helper. You purring, you purring about this? What do you think of the shark? Meh, meh, meh. Can I get a meh? No, not much. So the amazing thing I've learned today is that I can use the silicone glove, almost like extender, and the quick wood cures, even if you've got a load of this on there, and allows you to just smooth things out. See how I've got some ridges there, and it's going to be harder later to sand it, so it's easier if I smooth it out now. I'm just putting a little bit on my finger. And like I said, it's not keeping the quick wood from curing at all, but it is allowing it not to stick to my finger and let me smooth it out. And... Yeah, that's getting there. It's a bit of a hump right there. The great thing is it's letting me keep form it. This is supposed to look like a big muscle there on the tail, not an added on appendage. So, still working on it. <laughs> All right, for the time that the quick wood needed to really set, I took that time to mix up some buff colored paint and it's kind of a real tannish color. Basically, I took some kind of an ivory color and mixed brown with it to come up with kind of a gourd color that I could use for the base. So my next decision is there are some areas where I patched up where there were some where I had made the cuts. And so I've got to figure out, do I sand it and then paint it? And instead of using a brush, maybe use a sponge so that it has a bit of a rough texture. Um, I think I've got to wash this. I can feel that the that since I used quick wood and then I used the uh, petroleum, it's a little bit, well, actually this is silicone glove, it's a little bit slippery and paint might not stick. So um, sanding that'll help it, but I think I need to sand first. I'm going to use a really, really rough sandpaper and I'll give you a hint. If you have any friends who do any woodworking, Ask them for their used sandpaper. Usually it's got enough life in it for you to use. Um, they're throwing it out because it's not exactly the grit that they want anymore, but this will work fine on here. And this one's nice and coarse, so that's going to let me kind of fare in some of these areas. And then um, I think I'll paint with a sponge. I'll kind of dab on the brown so that it does still look like Shark skin. I'm gonna wash this first though. All right, so what I did was I went ahead and I did a base coat on the entire gourd and I did use a heat gun to dry it. You have to be really careful areas where you have quick wood, like here, the, 
the paint will just blister off of it. But what I wanted was I wanted to clearly be able to see where I've got some problems like that, where some of those joints are that just look really bad. And I don't think like this, I mean, look at this. I don't think that even using um, a sponge will camouflage those spots. I could sand some more and use the paint, kind of like the way they do it at a dentist, where you grit your teeth together and on the uh, black stuff. I could do it kind of like that, where you sand and that shows you when you get it smoothed out because you've got even color all the way through. I can do some of that by hand, which is what I prefer. He's got a little nick right here. I don't know if that takes away from him or if that just is kind of natural. And if I thought that the paint job was going to camouflage these spots or if I can incorporate them into it, like I do have a little bit of a V here and a V here, then that will work out okay. But these big <laughs> patches, no, that's not gonna work. So I will sand some and then maybe sponge paint and see how it looks after that. So progress. I was hoping by now I would already be painting because I can't wait. I can't wait to paint this. I mean, look, does that not look, when you're snorkeling, you look down and you see a shark. That looks just like it, right? <laughs> well, going a little bit slower than I had planned, I sanded and sanded and sanded, and then I painted again so that I could see how it looks. And I think it's still, you could still tell. And just using a sponge is not going to cover that. So I'm going to sand again <laughs> and paint again. I have sanded as much as I can sand. So now I am using one of these little, just a real cheap little sponge thing. And I'm just pouncing it everywhere to make shark skin kind of have to go over and make sure you don't have very definite circles here and there. So I'm just pouncing it everywhere to make some bumpy skin and that will hide some of the spots where there's a little bit of, you know, lines like here. time that I spend trying to get a perfect coat on something and getting it smooth <laughs> all that work pouncing and it's fairly smooth <laughs> I guess in order to get an actual textured effect I'd have to either put some vinegar in the paint or uh, maybe some sand something like that to kind of ooh, sand would be good hmm sand would make it really Ooh, sand would make it really rough like sharks really are. I think I'm going to do that next. I think I'll pounce the rest and then I'll pounce the whole thing with sand. Yeah. Boy, I'm doing anything imaginable to keep from getting to the colorful design work today, aren't I? <sighs> so in order to give the shark the shark-like texture, I went out in the yard and I got some sand. And I mixed it in with my paint. And I painted my coat, and it's nice and rough, just like a shark would be. I might have a little bit extra to rub off in a couple of spots, but it's a nice spot, mm, just like a shark. Super rough. Hold that coming off. some paint too so I guess I need to dry it some more but that helped hide some of the joints and maybe the paint will hide the rest of that I'm hoping so there he is nice and rough okay quick matte coat just to kind of seal everything in before I start with the colors and finally here I am at the end of the day, but I'm ready to start colors. I can't wait. I'm going to start with green here and move into blue here and into purple there. So that is my plan. It's going to be quite the shark. All right, I've got my colors lined up because I'm going to start with green here. So I've got a 
Bella Green and then a really bright Bella Green. This one is Lime Green and this one is Turquoise. And then I have the Deco Art Dark Turquoise and then a Bella Dynasty Purple. Uh, my color Pantone, Pantone 16, a blue, and then I need some accents. So I have a Bella Bluebird light, and then my color Pantone Lilac Rose, and then some Deco Art Purple, and then some Apple Barrel 2 Blue, and I've got um, also my Folk Art Black because I have a couple places on the tail that are gonna need some black. So I'm gonna start from the front, work my way back, and first I'm just gonna put down the base and then I'll put the design over it. So this is exciting, I finally get to put some paint on it. Okay, I tend to pour a little bit out into a dish and work from there, and so that's my plan, is to just start at the front and I wanna come back kind of fin to fin like that. And I'm not using any fancy brushes today because I'm painting over um, sand. <laughs> so first I just put the line of about where I want to go and then I'll do the same on the bottom. Yeah, the sand would probably tear up a good brush, so no point using a super good brush on this. And this is just the base and the designs are going to go over it so it's going to be okay if I blend it a little bit if I paint all of it I'm going to have trouble deciding where the actual birdhouse hole is aren't I so by color by putting the base all the way that means every bit of this is going to have the same thickness and darkness and I won't have a bunch of color variation from that. Looks like a big blimp. I'm turning and twisting this in every different light to make sure that there aren't any holidays because once I put the color away, I might not remember where I put which one. So I just want to make sure from every angle I've got good coverage. I think I'll just use a little bit of this and a little bit of black. Make it nice and dark. And I'm just kind of estimating on how much black but a little bit goes a long way. Ooh, did like two big drops. And if it's a little bit of tie-dye looking, that's gonna be okay also. So I'm just working with the same palette. Mm, it's a very pretty blue. It's actually very pretty, but it's a little bit too dark. So a more blue. Ooh, pretty. All right, I wanna take this back to the tail. With the sand on here, you kind of have to go in one direction and then go in another direction. And on these cutouts, I'm finding I have to clean the brush off a little bit because I get a lot of drippy stuff on the back side. Every time you drag across the edge, it makes a little bit drop to the other side. I don't think this edge has to be too exact for what I'm trying to accomplish. Sorry about the squeaky feet. This is the fun part. Seeing the colors come out. And then the last part will be the actual designs. That also will be probably the most fun part. Do you hold your mouth funny when you paint? Sometimes I do. I can't help it. I can feel the spray hitting me from the paint. Okay, 
chair's really squeaky, so I'm going to turn this off and just finish up the blue, and then I'll do purple down here. Shark. This might be all that I get done today. We'll see. I have to make dinner. So, I've got the basic colors ready. This might have to be the opening for the bird nest, and then I have to figure out how to hang it so that the tail is pretty heavy. I've got to figure out how to hang it so that if the bird's in there, it's still weighted. I might have to attach it in two places and do it, something like that. So I've got some teal, some blue, some purple, and now I'm going to be putting a design because this is not supposed to look like a totally realistic shark or a fun shark. I went through this whole project not thinking that a shark has a dorsal fin. So I cut a slot and I got it pretty close and I cut a piece of gourd and I'll just paint this one turquoise. And so now the shark has a dorsal fin. It's really a silly shark right now. Mm -hmm. 